Congress has just revealed their $1.7 trillion spending package. It is a 4,155 page bill, 1,500 pages more than last year. That's like a whole stimulus bill more of pages than last year's spending bill. Now, of course, this does avert a government a shutdown should it be passed, which of course it is expected to be passed. And that it can sometimes be nice to go into the holidays knowing we're not going to have a shutdown, but it's also going to come with a whole lot more spending and some of it raises some eyebrows. We're gonna talk about just that in this video. Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Remember the only sponsor for this channel are the programs linked down below on building your wealth. Let's get into the program of Congress is spending. So defense spending is expected to be up 850 or up to $858 billion for this particular spending package for next year. That's up $76 billion, about 8-ish percent. $40 billion for disaster relief. Think hurricanes, fires, uh, earthquakes, right? Electoral count reform. Now, this is an interesting one. This tries to basically prevent another January 6th from happening by making it clear that the vice president's role is simply to count the votes publicly in, in Congress and that he doesn't have any power to actually stop the transfer of power. Remember Mike Van uh, Pence, you know, hey, maybe Mike Pence can just refuse to count and there the electoral votes and therefore maybe the transfer of power could stop. That was a thesis uh, at the end of... 2020 and the beginning of 2021. Now, there are also $16 billion in earmarks in this legislation, which $16 billion is, is a smaller fraction of the $1.7 trillion that's in this entire package. But earmarks are really interesting because earmarks are basically this tool that allow senators to put individual little requests in a bill, and they stick those requests in a bill. Like one I was looking at was $857,000 for a new fire truck. And it, it's, it can be really, really specific little line items. And what's fascinating about it is uh, when, when you actually look at the appropriations website, and then you think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna start going through all of the appropriations. At first, you're like, okay, all right, so Senator Baldwin's got some in here. He's got $4.3 billion for the construction of a new food bank serving Western Wisconsin, or $2.5 million for child care center construction and equipment. Okay, like, some of these seem reasonable, like, hey, these are improvements to local areas, maybe improvements to public safety. But then, when, when you try to understand how many of these line item entries there are to actually go through them, and like who's gonna actually check on all of these, right? There are 14,048 appropriation requests, apparently, when you go through this appropriations uh, segment of the Senate website. Now, those don't necessarily all have to be related to this bill, but it's just like, oh man, those are a lot of line items, and you know, most of these are probably just, eh, whatever, slide it in. And one of the reasons we know that is because there's one individual who happens to be retiring, and this individual is sliding in a whole lot of them. Richard Shelby, who is retiring from the Senate uh, as someone on the Appropriations Committee, has $656 million in appropriation requests inserted into this particular bill, 17 projects in total, just for one senator. So one senator basically is getting $656 million to dole out to departments like the Port Authority, Department of Transportation, hey, go fix that road by my house. Not saying he's doing that, just saying like, hey, I'll get you that if you fix that road over there. Hey, I'll get you that. Like, that's Congress for you, right? Like, could you imagine being an individual with the power to have $656 million in money you could give away? You will get invited to everyone's parties, okay? <laughs> there are so many earmarks, it's crazy. Some of the big ones are a $45 billion in the actual bill, moving away from earmarks now, the actual bill, some of the big items in the actual bill are $45 billion of more funding for Ukraine. That's actually more than the $37 billion that Joe Biden requested. Some say that it's actually more than Joe Biden requested because Democrats think this might be the last opportunity they have before Republicans take over to send money to Ukraine. And as a result, what do we have? We have Mr. Zelensky, President Zelensky himself, coming and traveling from Ukraine to DC to conduct uh, his first 
in-person joint meeting with Joe Biden at 2 p.m. And they will be uh, since the invasion. And they will be conducting a public joint statement in front of Congress at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time today. So stay tuned for that. That's about 1.30 Pacific time. We'll get to see Zelensky and Biden together make a statement. Zelensky is nailing timing pretty well here, I'd say, as he's coming right as it seems like Congress is about to hand him almost another $50 billion. I guess I would make the flight over to America as well for $50 billion. There's also a segment for uh, Michelle Obama trail for $3.6 million. Nancy Pelosi is apparently getting her name on a building. There is a TikTok ban. Uh, that is a ban for uh, a removal of TikTok on any government devices and a ban disallowing TikTok from uh, being able to be installed on any government devices. This has to do with uh, spy concerns, spyware concerns, contact downloading concerns from the uh, Chinese Communist Party and potentially implications that, you know, could sneak through uh, TikTok's uh, data servers if data happens to also be stored in uh, Asia and outside of America, which uh, so far it seems like research is suggesting copies of data that's supposed to stay in the United States has already been found or copies of that data have already been found in places like Singapore. And that's leading people to be a little bit concerned that, ooh, maybe TikTok isn't so safe on our phone. There's some new tax rules around land easements that are given to the government for big tax write-offs. This is actually, in my opinion, a direct slam on Donald Trump, who took massive tax write-offs using these sorts of strategies, and those have come under scrutiny lately, so that slipped into here. We've seen a security boost. Listen to this one. The Capitol Police will extend protective details for the former House Speaker, for up to one year after they leave office, and we know that Nancy Pelosi is about to step down from being the House Speaker, and of course her husband was violently attacked in San Francisco, potentially longer as well if warranted, so kind of an open door there to potentially have security forever, and also two and a half million dollars of funding for residential security programs for senators. I'm kind of thinking to myself, what are they going to install like a hundred ring cameras and charge, you know, 10 grand a piece for them, or I guess that'd be more like 25 grand a piece for them. Who knows? Anyway, uh, what's a not in this bill, and then I'm going to go through some actual provisions here on screen, are uh, an extension to the child tax credit. Remember, that was $3,600 per year per child uh, up to six years old, and then $3,000 per child six to 17 years old for the 2021 tax year. Half of that was paid in 2021, and uh, the other half was paid when you filed your taxes this year for 2021. The Cannabis Safe Banking Act did not make it into this bill as well. But don't worry, some things that did make it into the bill are the following. We here have, hear ye, hear ye, for necessary expenses associated with Pacific salmon populations. Yes, salmon populations are getting 65 million dollars. Some folks are calling this fishy, although it is worth noting that Canada uh, spent, uh, is spending like 647 million Canadian dollars. So I guess that's probably way less than we're spending. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, on slowing the decline of the salmon population in the Pacific. So this is actually an issue, but some people are pointing this out as fishy. Uh, anyway, there is 7.5 million dollars here in funding towards developing a better understanding for domestic radicalization phenomena. This would be like school shooters and things like that. It's like, okay, well, what are they going to spend that seven and a half million dollars on? Don't shoot schools. I, I, who knows? Here's uh, another section here. Of the amounts appropriated in this act, there will be $410 million that shall be available to reimburse Georgia, Lebanon, Egypt, Tunisia, and Oman for the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, now, keep in mind, every single year we do a budget. Uh, everybody freaks out over the uh, foreign aid that is sent uh, to other countries. Now, keep in mind, every single year we have any kind of foreign aid in a bill, it automatically attracts attention from individuals to say, we should spend all of that money only on America and not on foreign aid for the rest of the world. We have a total of about $51 billion of annual foreign aid expenses to other countries. And you can actually go to foreignassistance.gov and just scroll around. Like 
$3.7 billion allocated for Afghanistan. I expect after the Taliban have taken over, that might change a little bit. So we'll see. Ethiopia, $1.2 billion. And you can see the breakdown here. The most goes towards peace and security, then health, then humanitarian assistance, economic development, and so on and so forth. These things are, of course, used in trade agreement negotiations as well. So these things can get very complicated. Worth noting that $51 billion of foreign aid just represents 3% of the $1.7 trillion spending in this bill. Kinda wild, kinda wild. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one got a lot of drama online. This one here says $1.5 billion for border management requirements of the US Customs and Border Protection Agency. So basically $1.5 billion for border patrol. But wait a minute, here it says to acquire, maintain, or extend border security technologies and capabilities except for technology and capabilities to improve border patrol processing. So people get really confused by this. Uh, this is because the way Congress divide thing, divides things can be a little confusing. If you go like 60 pages earlier in the bill, you could actually see a separate $230 million specifically for those types of technologies. So just worth kind of showing that sometimes these things get taken out of context. But what doesn't get taken out of context is the fact that the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program Trust Fund is getting a 15% boost to its trust fund, and it is going up to $15.2 million. Keep in mind, the New York Times just ran a front page story about how fewer older folks are actually getting their COVID boosters. Although I, I don't think anybody's really surprised by that. Uh, we've got over here uh, $524 million going to minority health and health disparities research. Then we have on the uh, next page right here, we've got $300 million that should be available for the purchases of vaccines, antivirals, and medical supplies for the flu. Total of $335 million just for the flu. We also have $535 million going to the Corporation of Public Broadcasters. Those are like uh, organizations that put together M NPR, National Public Radio. We have over here, this is uh, one that got a little bit of attention online, $575 million going basically to areas uh, under uh, the guidance of the United States Leadership Against HIV, AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria Acts which in my opinion is going into areas probably like really destitute and poor areas in Africa. But some folks read this and, and they see this as, oh my gosh, $575 million is going towards family planning and reproductive health. What kind of agenda is this going to? Uh, I personally believe it's probably going to areas where population growth could, could impact uh, not only the environment, but, but potentially lead to more poverty or like things like incest, right? So it's really just more of a breakdown of foreign aid in my opinion, but it's something that got a lot of attention online. Here's another one. We have $200 million may be available for Gender Equity and Equality Action Fund with not less than 50 million being available or des de designated to increase leadership opportunities for women in countries where women and girls suffer discrimination due to the law or policy or otherwise. Over here, we have $3 million for carrying out the Pollinator Friendly Practices on Roadsides and Highways Act. Okay, so this is basically saying, I, I wrote a little note here, that this has to do, like people are calling this $3 million for bees. Well, to some degree, if we just look at the title, that is somewhat true. It is also a matter of trying to reduce irrigation at the sides of roads, reducing mowing on the side of roads, reducing the need to use herbicides and pesticides on roads, so that way there are more natural flowers on the side of roads, which are beneficial to bees, but it's also beneficial for less expenses on mowing, it's beneficial for less water costs, it's beneficial for the environment to use less chemicals, right? So there's a lot more to that, and my expectation is that $3 million goes to sort of research on the type of plants and things like that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to like defend all the provisions of, of this bill. I think it's kind of crazy, some of the wild things that are in here. Uh, and I bet you the vast majority of this lines people's pockets who don't deserve it, and a lot of it is wasted. I really believe that. But uh, at least some of it probably has a good intent. I don't know. I'm not endorsing it. I'm just trying to share it. There's also, I guess, a, a money going to designate a certain park, the Ukrainian Independence Park. 
So you've got a lot of stuff going in here, but there you go. There's a little bit of look at the omnibus spending bill for 2022 that's going to help us prevent a government shutdown. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, consider sharing the video. Check out the programs on building your personal wealth linked down below. Stocks, real estate, real estate investing, buying your first home, your first rental property, property management, making a YouTube channel, being a real estate agent, you name it, starting a business, becoming a hustler, increasing your income. There are programs on everything linked down below. Check them out. They come with private live streams with me. We can do a direct Q&A. Thanks so much for watching and folks, we'll see you in the next one.